This is one of the first scotches I ever fell in love with, but several years later, do I still think it's really any good? Hello and welcome back to the channel and yes, today I'm taking a look at this Dalmore's 12 year old Sherry Cask Select. Not to be confused with the Dalmore 12, that is a slightly different version, but this is basically the same liquid that has been finished in Sherry Casks and as I alluded to in the intro, it is one of my favourite or was one of my favourite scotches. When I'll be totally honest, I didn't really know a great deal about scotch at that time. As a result, I want to now try it again after several years. It's been a while since I've had a sip of this to find out whether I still think it's any good or not, or if my tastes have actually changed completely. It is from Dalmore. As a result, it comes in this beautiful looking bottle and I've got to show it off. Uh, you know, that glorious stag head on the front there. Apparently you can prize these off the bottles when you're done with it, but to be honest, I think that'd make a beautiful infinity bottle as well. Uh, on the back, there's not a lot on there, just the normal labeling stuff. But yeah, it is a very pretty look looking thing. But I'll be honest, the fact that it is so good looking is part of the reason I'm thinking that maybe, just maybe, I won't be so wowed by this nowadays. And well, the reason for that is that Dalmore, if we're honest, a lot of people consider them to be, well, more form rather than function. And what I mean by that is very marketing driven, you know, a lot of effort and cost goes into the bottles themselves, not necessarily so much the liquid. They also don't have written on here anywhere. I'm pretty sure that it's non-chill filtered or non-coloured because, well, frankly, I think that's not true is to my understanding. They definitely add a bit of colourant anyway. You'll notice that for a 12 year old Scotch, okay, this one's been finished in Sherry Cast, so it could get a bit more of that colour. But if you go and look at other bottles of Dalmore, yeah, they are suspiciously dark for their age. And in general, they are a bit pricey for what you actually get. Incidentally though, this bottle ironically actually isn't that badly priced, currently coming in around 60 quid. Yes, you can get 12 year olds from other distilleries as low as like 25 or 30, but let's be honest, the real decent ones probably start at 45 50 so yes it's a premium but Dalmore is a premium brand so that's probably not a massive surprise but is that premium really worth it and that is what we're going to find out just before we do that it's worth saying Dalmore is a highland distillery they're about 20 miles north of Inverness so that's right up on the top east side of Scotland. Um, I have a real soft spot for distilleries in that area. Things like Old Portney are just a little bit higher again. Um, you know, that kind of coastal and distinctly, I don't know what it is, but there is something about Highland whiskies that bring that kind of a bit of the sweetness from Speyside, but a bit of the more raw edginess of kind of island whiskies. And I don't know, I just, I, I dig it. I dig it. Anyway, let's get a dram poured, shall we? Not a great cork pop. Does have a nice cork top though, as you can probably imagine. Now it looks nice and dark in the glass, but as we've discussed, that probably doesn't mean a lot. They are, yeah, not averse to adding colorant um, is my understanding. So there's a good chance that that isn't entirely all authentic, but it looks nice anyway. It's got a, it's almost like a burnt orange actually. That is quite an unusual tone for Scotch whiskey at least. It's definitely more on the, yeah, brown and orange kind of the spectrum. Most of them look a bit more sun-kissed, but yeah, it looks it looks nice enough. As soon as I opened the bottle, the, the aroma in the room was nice. It's very, um, well, <laughs> sherry cask leaning. It's big plums, grapes, raisins, loads of dried fruity notes in there. It's very Christmas pudding-y, I suppose, is the, um, the obvious reference to make. Incidentally, the reason that I got into this had nothing to do with the design of the bottle because this is the first ever whiskey I bought a full bottle of off the back of trying it in my Whiskey Me subscription. This is not a sponsored bit. It's just something that I use, genuinely pay for, for myself. And it's kind of part of my whiskey exploration, trying to work out what to bring to the actual channel. And this was one of the first ones I ever received several years ago and ended up buying a bottle of it. So yeah, it was just a nice surprise when I picked one up and it looked like that. But yeah, it's got this 
slightly punchy. It's 43% this, or 86 proof, so it's not a big hitter in terms of ABV, but then a bit prickly on the nose there. Quite a lot of ethanol coming through. It has not been open for a while, though, so some of those fumes could have been building, and it is warm in here, so that, again, that may not be helping it, but... But yeah, just a big whole host of those nice, big, rich, dried, dark fruits. Um, a load of kind of wine, red wine kind of style, obviously as a result of the sherry cask. And an absolute heap of big, boozy ethanol to finish it all off with. It doesn't smell bad, of course, it's still got enough sweetness to balance it out. But maybe not the most dynamic whiskey on the aroma. Let's give it a go, shall we? Cheers. Huh. Well, it started off a bit meh, it got really, really good in the middle, and I'm still trying to decide about the aftertaste. It's um, it's certainly not a no, but it's not a yes just yet either. Really doesn't taste an awful lot like it smells. You're not getting anywhere near the amount of big, rich, you know, raisiny, great, plum, prune flavours you'd expect from the sherry cask and from the description of the aroma it's definitely got that proper slightly coastal highland sea spray thing somewhere in there and that ultimately will always make me like it a bit like there's no getting away from that i just do love that profile it's reminding me a little bit of that um old portney pinot de charentes excuse the pronunciation uh, bottle that I reviewed a long time ago as well. In fact, I might be tempted to break that out and give it a side by side because, yeah, it is quite similar. Obviously, wine cask origin or grape boobs cask origin at any rate. And yeah, it's it's got a bit of the how do I describe it? Slightly astringent tannin quality from that without any of the big flavour. And well, it's actually also bringing in a whole host of kind of honey and crisp apple tones which well are delicious and all of the things i mentioned taste good but do they really go together i'm not sure we're gonna have to do a proper top to bottom taste test here try and break this down a little bit so initially right on the tip of the tongue it's sweet it's a little bit syrupy it's got a little bit of kind of fruit crispness it's not quite the sourness of citrus but again it's that kind of crisp apple vibe along with a good dose of slightly honeyed sweetness i guess um over the mid palate sharp tangy booze is there prickling away just a little bit it's got quite a mineral heavy vibe it's where a lot of that sea salt sea spray sea air quality really comes into play here not quite getting all the way down that line it's not all the way there we're not comparing it to you know seaweed and like being in the middle of the north sea on a fishing vessel but just a a little bit of a soft sea air breeze is really where it's at. It's nice, not particularly complex, but it is very nice. Then on the back of the tongue. Booze spike continues, so it's get prickly tannin. A little bit of the, well, I guess it's the real esters from that, uh, that sherry cask. It's just, it's sherry, but not necessarily the bit you like about sherry, which is maybe where my question mark on this is coming in it does help balance the sweetness up front but so does the sea air thing and i think that had done enough it's kind of started off really sweet got to this nice balanced middle point and then it's just start to creep back in the opposite direction again becoming unbalanced the aftertaste though really is where i guess it matters the most and on that zingy spiky orange peel now comes flooding in it's got a tiny bit of residual raisin richness on the back end which is very nice indeed it is quite christmasy this i think is what i would say it's something to consider if you want a soft sweet approachable and approachable big fruity whiskey for christmas actually this is a great shout wrong time of year for me to be reviewing it it's the middle of august but you know you get the idea because we talk about things like um the boona harbin 12 and a few things like that that are really rich really cakey and they're delicious but they actually might be a bit too much for some people's palates if they're not used to big strong whiskies this feels like a reserved version and not back version and as a result yeah i think it works pretty well now as i said it is reminding me a bit of this old portney's pinot de charentes uh coastal series this is the first in the coastal series the second one is out 
I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this bottle. I discovered that I liked Old Portney and you know, I thought, you know what, I'm going to buy one of the limited editions. That's what this is. It's a lot pricier than their regular supermarket stuff. And actually, I don't know that it's much better. At least, it's not definitely not always much better. You know, some days I pull one of these out and I go, that's why I bought this. It is absolutely fantastic. Other days, I take a sip and meh. Nah. Not really for me. I actually went to the distillery. Um, I think I've been there twice now, but I went there earlier, uh, oh no, it was last year in fact, and um, talked to one of the staff members there about this bottle. And without me prompting anything, I just said to them, how do you find it? They didn't know that I got a bottle. And they said, not sure. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. It seems to be very changeable. It's a bit warm here today, and I can't tell you whether that makes it better or worse. So we're about to find out and how similar it really is. That's a better cork pop to the Delmore 12 uh, Sherry Cask Select. So tiny pour. Now Old Pulteney, I don't think state either way whether there is colorant in there or not. I want to go out on a whim and say that there is, but I don't know for sure. So I'm not going to definitely double down on that one. Um, but it's a fair bit lighter, it's safe to say. Um, obviously different type of wine cast. This is a white wine cast, but like pudding wine, dessert wine um, style, I think from memory. I, please someone tell me if I'm wrong on that because I'm doing this very much off the back of my memory from a video from about two and a half years ago. So yeah, you know, um, but Okay, the Dalmore feels much more vintage Christmas pudding. The old Pulteney, spikier, a lot spikier, very effervescent. It's quite, it's more whiny, literally. Like it, it's big, sweet, fresh, white wine, grapes come, you know, the big. If you've ever had a dessert wine, it, it's a thing like nothing else. And yeah, that's all it could really be described as. It's the freshness and the approachability of white wine, but without any of the acidity and are flooded with sweetness, which makes it, well, pretty fantastic, if I'm honest. That is all I'm getting out there at the minute. Cheers. Okay, today is a good day with this bottle, has to be said. That is very, very nice. They aren't hugely similar, with the exception of the fact that at the back of the palette, Remember what I said about this, like having that kind of tannin wine astringency again, I wasn't sure whether it was a good thing or not. Same place, same experience with the old Pulteney, which makes me think, is there something in, I keep saying wine, but it's any grape, fermented grape finished product. So that's wine, dessert wine, champagne, um, sherry, port, you know, the, the winey ones. Is there something in grape fermented finished barrel whiskies, which is a mouthful, that actually leads into this sometimes good, sometimes not kind of a sensation at the back of the tongue, um, just based on those tannins, because that feels very similar. And today they're good, they're not fantastic. I've definitely enjoyed both of these more than I do right now in the past. I've also definitely sipped the old Pulteney and enjoyed it a lot less, the Delmore Maybe not, but it's probably kind of in its normal zone, if you like. So, yeah, interesting one. Have you had any fermented grape-based barrel-finished whiskies uh, and found something similar? Like, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. I don't know whether it's a heat thing, a pressure thing, a how frequently it's been opened thing, but there's definitely a similarity in there that might lead me to believe so. But... The Dalmore 12 is what we're really talking about. Sorry, the Dalmore 12 Sherry Cask Select. Is it worth a purchase? It's a nice gift for someone, is what I'm gonna say. It's not prohibitively expensive for what it is and the nice bottle and everything else. You could get a better whiskey for that price and less, easily. There are loads out there. Um, I bang on about, uh, uh, Brook Laddie's the classic Laddie, even that Boone Harvin 12 actually I think is a better whiskey with some similar tones. But, you know what, it's got the prestige, it's got everything else, it's nice. If you've got someone who's really into their whiskey, like really geek levels into their whiskey, don't buy them one of these because they probably won't appreciate it because they know how much better is out there for what you paid. But for someone who just likes the casual sip, wants something that will look nice on their shelf, 
yeah, I think you could probably do worse. It's not the greatest pick out there, but it's not an absolute no, as you can probably tell. And I think that really is all I've got to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't already subscribed, if you would be so kind. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers.